Just catching up with some moto news. I haven't covered news for a while here on the phone show. It's great to see Motorola sticking with the Z's form factor and the mods concept. In fact, alongside two new phones, there are some new mods too, with a new turbo power pack with autonomous charging, a gamepad mod adding gaming controls either side of the Z screen in landscape mode, and a new version of the popular JBL Sound Boost mod as well. The new phones, the Z2, play with 1080p screen, Snapdragon 626 processor, 12 meg pixel, a dual pixel camera with f over 1.7 lens and a 3000 milliampere battery. Most importantly, like its predecessor, the Z2 Play has a 3.5 mil audio jack. Hooray! There's also the Z2 Force, higher end but with some compromises. There's a Snapdragon 835 chipset and a QHD display, but in going for a genuinely shatterproof screen, there's the usual compromise in going plastic. It will scratch. And there's no 3.5mm audio jack, which is a shame, though at least Motorola has the DAC inboard, so the supplied dongle is just adapting quality audio to the 3.5mm format. Still, why Moto? Why? Both Moto Z2 models are fully compatible with all the mods as far as I know. The only remaining question is whether there will be a vanilla Z2 with force-like specs but a traditional Gorilla Glass display. Time will tell. Now you may have spotted from tweets and so on that I've been using this, the ZT Axon 7. It's my main Android phone on and off for the last three months. ZTE, you say, surely you've had issues with Chinese ROMs and support and bloatware. Well, yes, but that was out of the box, except that this now has been running Lineage OS and very well indeed. Now, Lineage, you say, don't panic, it's still Android. In fact, it's the successor to Cyanogen Mod, the super popular near stock OS images that have been flashed onto many of the most popular Android phones of the last five years. The folks managing Cyanogen sold out basically and cut off resources to the enthusiasts developing the OS. But as developers and hackers are wont to do, they simply took the source code, changed the name, crowdfunded the server and space and bandwidth, and the result is Lineage OS. It's pretty much the same as with Cyanogen Mod. You get daily or weekly OS updates, bang up to date Android security patches from Google, all kept in lockstep with the latter's Android open source project, AOSP, and it's all free and available for most phones you can think of. The tricky bit is getting Lineage OS onto your phone in the first place, and it's different for just about every handset. You see, phone manufacturers don't like the idea of users simply replacing all their hard work at UI customization and bloatware licensing with something leaner and meaner, so they make it hard locking the so-called bootloader, the code that gets run the first few seconds when you power on an Android phone, which means that you need to unlock this bootloader, and that varies in difficulty depending on device. It's trivial for a Google Nexus or Pixel. It's insanely hard for this ZTE, though phone show friend, Mike Warner, battled through it for me. Thank you, Mike. And if this is you investigating one of your own phones, then look on xda-developers.com. You should find a tutorial, links to Windows utility you'll need, and hopefully, help from others. An hour or two's reading and some head scratching later and you should be good to go. In my case, Mike helpfully put on Team Win Recovery Project, the most popular recovery partition. This takes the place of whatever your phone manufacturer had hard coded in and allows you to flash on any compatible operating system. To give you an idea, with ZTE's original OS in one big zip file and the latest Lineage OS in another, I can pick either and completely reflash the phone to run either in minutes. You don't lose any of your user files, your photos, your downloads, but you do lose your home screen setup and installed apps. So it's not something you want to do too often, apart from when you're playing around like I've been doing. In most cases, you can just stick with Lineage OS and its weekly updates, though it's very stock and on the ZT Axon 7 here, very stable with a few bells and whistles inherited from Cyanogen Mod. Uh, in theory, it updates over the air, but it didn't work for me. But anyway, I just download each week's update separately and install it in place. It takes minutes without disturbing any of my apps and setup. I do it every week, but then I'm super zealous. Most people will be happy with a once a month download and install to make sure they pick up the very latest Android security patches. Oh, and the first time you put it on your phone, the very first, you'll also need to flash what's called the G apps package, all the Google apps and modules that aren't included in the AOSP. Don't worry, this is quick and painless, and you'll end up with everything a Pixel or Nexus would have. 
So watch the bells and whistles. Don't worry, they're all fairly lightweight. There's live display, adjusting screen color after dark to avoid eye strain. A gallery application, useful when Google Photos throws a wobbly because you haven't got connectivity. Or you can use gallery as your main video player. There's a local music player, a screen and call recorder, that's visuals and audio. There's the trebuchet launcher inherited from Cyanogen and Mod, although the Google Pixel launcher also comes with that G apps package and has all the goodness you'd expect, including long press shortcuts, context sensitive on the home screens. Uh, Multi-user support, of course, editable quick settings, pane and so on. All very innocuous and nothing that affects operation or performance at all. Unlike Cyanogen and Mod, Lineage OS doesn't come with optional root access. Uh, which is a good thing. It means that you're running as a regular Android user and regular online banking apps should work fine. Though Android Pay currently balks at Lineage OS. I'm expecting an update from Google to fix this at some point. The only other glitch I found is that Netflix is hidden in the Play Store from Lineage OS users, presumably for some DRM reason. So I sideloaded the Netflix app from apkmirror.com, a fabulous resource if you know what you're doing. And then Netflix works just fine. I was a huge Cyanogen mod fan for the last five, six years. The idea of wresting control of updates from large companies that often lose interest in their users and Lineage OS absolutely carries on the tradition. The official list of supported devices can be found on lineageos.org, but there are many unofficial builds present on XDA developers. Just make sure you spend a bit of time reading through the Lineage thread for your device first to get a handle on the stability of it before embarking on your adventure. But if your phone is well supported and the manufacturers drop the ball on updates for you, Lineage OS can breathe new life into a tired or otherwise obscure handset. And yes, you can donate to help keep Lineage OS and its servers going. I did.